India is a gift that keeps on giving. I say that there's business opportunities here that you wouldn't even know about until you get here. So that's a big plus and only your eyes will see that. Hello and welcome. I'm Elizabeth Formosa, the founder of Fashion Equipped and devourer of all things fashion, business and mindset. In this podcast, I'm speaking with thought leaders, change makers and entrepreneurs about the business side of fashion and everything in between. Fashion Business Mindset is your front row seat to real stories from designers, brands, entrepreneurs, makers and mentors. We'll discuss how to launch and grow a fashion business and give you insider access to the future of fashion. So let's do this together and ensure that you're equipped to make the fashion business your business. Welcome back to Fashion Business Mindset. On today's episode, I welcome back Emma Puttick, the founder of Nordic. Now, Emma and I have been working together for the last two years on our unique business elevation concept of offering India sourcing experience trips. Now, during this episode, we unpack our recent March trip, sharing the experiences and the highlights with you. Now, this is a conversational episode where Emma and I both share our experiences. As we recap the last trip, we talk about the power of building relationships, connection and camaraderie, the cultural and operational insights that are unique to India, sustainable sourcing, the unique value of a trip like this, preparing for the next trip which is taking place between the 28th of September and the 6th of October, And we invite you to join us for our India Sourcing Experience information session taking place on Monday the 17th of June at 6.30pm Melbourne time and the link is in the show notes. As we unpack India, we hope this inspires you to visit this incredible country, join the trip and take your business and your sourcing strategy to the next level. So let's dive in. Emma, welcome back to the podcast. Thanks, Liz. Nice to talk to you virtually. (laughs) I know. Where are you for everyone tuning in? So I'm sitting in my home base in Mumbai and it's on the cusp of monsoons and it's like a a natural sauna. (laughs) There you go. You don't have to pay for it. (laughs) No. <laughs> uh, well, we are here to unpack India. So very timely that you are back in Mumbai um, because we want to share some highlights of our last sourcing experience trip with our audience. I've had lots of people message me, email me, tap me on the shoulder when I've been out and about and saying, how was India? Can you tell us all about it? So I thought no better place than the podcast to chat about it so we can share it with everyone far and wide. So let's start with some highlights. What were some of the standout moments for you, Emma? Yeah, well, every trip always has so many learnings. And as you know, uh, when you're thrown into the chaos and the charm of India, initially it's very overwhelming. And uh, for me, it's a little bit of a patience uh, for the first few days as we're letting everybody settle in. But the highlight for me is usually around day three. I think that's when, you know, the breakthroughs happen, the creativity uh, starts flowing Uh, the understanding of what India can offer really kicks in. And um, the highlight is also what is amazing and really from the beginning is the connection and the bonding and Mm. a bunch of strangers um, (laughs) all thrown. We're all suddenly best friends and in sort of less than an hour. So that that and that uh, bond that continues post the trip has been uh, such a rewarding uh, observation. And mm. um, yeah, I, I, how, I how about it. you? Yeah, yeah, I, yes, I think you've yes. nailed it. I think that's absolutely the gold. And yeah, likewise, I think 
just sitting back and watching the personal and the professional transformation take place, it's pretty special. I mean, we know on day one, you know, everyone's pretty much out of their comfort zone, probably us included, because, you know, we're Correct. into our third, fourth trip now, but it's still all new to us. We've been breaking new ground. So as much as we're prepared and we're ready to go, you've got to expect the unexpected. So everyone's typically a little bit out of their comfort zone in the first day or so. Um, mm. But it doesn't take long to settle in. Now, you know, India is a fast paced country. <laughs> there is a lot going on. There's a lot of sights and sounds. And I guess our time together is always jam packed as well. But as we saw on the last trip, by day five, we witnessed outstanding transformations, whether that was personal or professional or both. I think everyone that joined us in that week was stretched personally, professionally, creatively on all levels. But when they all sat back and debriefed with us at the end, there was this sense of achievement and I think pride for mm. what they had done. And I think even the investment in themselves and the backing of themselves to be there, you know, to go to the other side of the world, experience a country for the first time for many of our last trip attendees and immerse themselves in all things India has to offer. Mm, precisely. The transformation after five days to get such a sort of turnaround and a pivot in how you look at India, how you look at yourself, how you look at your own creativity, how you're viewing your business from abroad. Mm. Travel changes anybody in some form and then but doing it from a business perspective, it just takes you to another level. So yeah, yeah I, I it, we're just uh, yeah, tip of the iceberg and um, you're right, we're still learning and, and yeah. But, mm. um, I love I loved what we implemented on the last trip, which was the debriefing sessions. So coming mm. together, well, we came together each morning and at the end of each day. And I think everyone sharing their daily experiences was really valuable for all involved because we got to hear exactly what they um achieved during that day or what inspired them and we yep. were able able to fine tune the week as we kind of built up to the crescendo of you know seeing high scale manufacturers and yep. I think that way we're able to tailor it as well for each individual's ideal experience very true that is that that part was powerful those breakfast meetings in a comfortable format and I mean the accommodation covers that. everyone feels relaxed the accommodation is so beautiful you feel like you're at home uh and then everyone sharing in a safe environment wow I never thought of that or what they're unsure about or if they were nervous and then you're getting that 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 peer feedback because everyone was feeling the same way so it, it's it's such real it's the truth um and then they could sit on it and then at the end of the day they had other insights Mm. So, yeah, that part was amazing and getting and we were there to listen to all of that and help and guide them in preparation for the next day so they weren't going in um, yeah. a little bit blind. They yeah. got be Everyone got better and better and better by day five. You know, they were experts at it. Yeah, yeah, I agree. Very powerful. Now, mm. I wanted to touch on your belief that in-person connections when you are meeting any new supply chain partners kind of for, for the first time that you believe in person is really powerful and can help you to move forward, you know, much more swiftly than you potentially could online. So I'd love mm. to, for you to share a little bit about that with those tuning in. Why do you feel in particular when you're doing business in India that the best investment you can make in the early days is to actually visit the country and sit in front of your potential supply chain partners in person. I'm passionate about that. I've I've felt the pain of both sides of doing business this way when I first arrived here 20 years ago and really I had, I had a sort of a startup brand you could say and very, was kind had a good idea of what I wanted to achieve you know snippets of brand direction and versus then when I was at my peak and I got stuck inside in COVID for two years and couldn't do anything face to face mm -hmm. and um, what that did to my creativity so 
I am so passionate about being here and the creativity that comes out when you're in the space where the fabrics and your hands are and your eyes are touching the fabrics, the art, artist's work, seeing the minute you step out, you will see some art or something that will inspire you. It, you can't even put it into words because it's only by eyes and, and touch that the creativity just starts to accumulate in you and then it wants to come out that moment you want to be able to speak to the supplier and say you know how you know you can pull a fabric you can and we saw that with the girls you you pull a fabric or you start looking at a swatch you start looking at a little piece of embroidery and start pulling it all together to make a product mm. to do that virtually to sit and wait there's no perfect time but the perfect time is around a table the old-fashioned way of creating and talking and brainstorming and because the pool is so deep here of options um they can't even get that into a digital format to show you what mm. is available so it it took me probably i mean it took me a long time to get to that point and i just suggest that you you have to invest in that time you've you've really got to do it that way unless you're very clear and you're doing cookie cutter creations or cookie cutter products how are you going to get inspired how are they going to understand your ethos how they're going to understand your brand voice and then post that with creatives because we can just sort of go this is a good idea and the circle gets wider and wider you need to actually then be able to hone in and put it into a system that both sides that can then communicate digitally post your trip. Uh, that is also a challenge if you haven't done that face-to-face -face and discussed how they like to communicate with you. So mm. it's East and Western meeting uh, from the beginning is really important. And it, it speeds up. It speeds up trust. It speeds up design processing. And it speeds up problem solving that's my take on it I wouldn't really know how to suggest any other way there's there's this invest a capital investment a personal investment in your brand to come here and be that person on the ground talking to them around their their in their workspace I would say from what I've observed, and I'm very used to doing business online all over the world, whether it be China or Indonesia or Vietnam and now India, but I've got to say now that I've had a front row seat on these amazing trips, I think the elevation of business that was mm -hmm. done in person was was glaringly clear so as you rightly said if you're doing business online it, it obviously can be done you're briefing in the manufacturer you're sending your tech packs you're ordering your samples okay, it's a very systematic kind of process that you work through and of course it works well but what we observed was the ladies who joined us on the last trip they were in the fabric room they were they were mm. rifling through all mm. of the fabric. They found some amazing vintage fabrics. When we're in the showroom, mm. the merchandisers were bringing out style after style just based on the feedback that the girls were giving. They were like, oh, actually, we want something that's a little bit more resort-driven. And all of a sudden, you know, there was a, res a rack of resort wear. So I think that tangible kind of experiential experience is you can't get that over a video call um so there could be golden nuggets that are no. there that you will never see unless you are physically visiting the factory or the showroom Correct. yeah and Correct. of course the relationship that you build there's nothing like meeting someone in person as you said no. You get to share your brand story, your ethos, your journey, how you've even gotten to where you are right now, whether you've been in business for some time or you're at the very beginning of your journey. And, mm. you know, sharing that in person creates a rapport, a relationship immediately. So when you are back, whether it's back in Australia or wherever it is you live, there's a connection and that's a solid connection that you've invested in making. So it changes the tone of communication once you're back and you start to do business online. Would you agree with that? A hundred percent. It's, 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 yeah, it's so important and it has to be part of your, your strategy of creativity. It's mm. uh, for innovation, uh, seeing what's new and, and when they're looking and then pitching about their brand you subconsciously new things happen 
Yeah. So even while you're there and you'll be thinking about it, then you'll sleep on it. And the next day you go, oh, hold on, I've got a new idea that will add a lot of value and you can do it straight away. So if you wanted to make something, you can make it the next day or adjust a sample or adjust a tech mm. pack. You can do it right there in front of them and speak. They'll go by your guidance and that you can talk them through everything. So the, there's it's such a valuable, important step to get on the right track yeah. and doing it this way. Yeah, I love seeing that too, like the samples, like the workshop yes. that was happening in real time and all of yes. a sudden there was a sample there or a swatch there. So as you said, things you just can't achieve online in a short period of time anyway. And I, I also think there's a level of respect from the manufacturer's perspective that we've actually, you know, the clients have come, they've they've actually invested to travel and visit mm, and, and mm. show up at the showroom. There's a yes. level of respect straight away that you are investing in your business and you're visiting the principals and you get to tour the factory and, and do all of the things because they also can only communicate so much online and for you to actually Correct. walk the floor, visit the showroom, it's just, yeah, it's next level. It is next level. So let's talk about the cultural and the operational insights. So mm. are there any like key cultural insights or operational dynamics that you could share for those who potentially haven't experienced sourcing in India? Now, I know you've sourced exclusively out of India all of these years, so you don't have mm -hmm. a frame of reference, but knowing what you know, what could you share to help? Um, just to kind of set the scene. Okay, so India is very relationship-based and they do business uh, personally face-to-face. -face. I have been transparent about that and I did say that to the last group that don't be offended if they don't answer emails. They, everything is face-to-face -face or with WhatsApp so that you'll find their communication style is completely different to what we're used to. Mm -hmm. So um, understanding the, how the business relationship is going to work from day one is vital and knowing when that you're going to need some negotiation skills at what point. The sampling is the creative and the fun, but then you're going to come down to production and timelines, how they're going to answer you when you need timely responses. All of that is is done face-to-face -face from the beginning and setting the framework and they, you know, you'll get a mutual understanding. Then when you're there, you'll also meet everybody else within the supplier's uh, factory and you'll meet the, you know, they meet the, the owner and then the merchandisers and then the people in the production. So you, you'll you meet everybody that's in the high right, in the team, and you'll be assigned to that. But they would never disclose that if they hadn't met you. So you'll start building a personal relationship with the merchandiser, the people that will actually be doing your work, understanding your brand, that you'll be growing with them. So that's very important. And you'll also get a good understanding of, you know, you'll see how it operates and you, there are, there is flexibility needs uh, with India, of course. Uh, you know, we're about to have monsoons and that will slow down some fabric uh, production timelines. There'll be, under, you know, understanding um, where those gaps in your timeline will have a, you know, a, a consequence. You can pull all of that out and get a good mutual uh, boundaries and understanding on how that will work from both sides so nobody's frustrated. Mm -hmm. um, and then also it's very important from the beginning to have a successful, um, you know, sourcing strategy because they will be your eyes and ears while you're on the ground. So those, those things are often done in uh, a safe environment at the beginning when everyone is happy to go on this venture together mm -hmm. and they will be able to bring out new, they'll understand who you are, what your likes are, what your dislikes are, and it'll just be a, a very fast um, trust uh, process as well. So you'll feel comfortable and relaxed mm -hmm. that you're in good hands. I love it. Just basically sets the tone for trade. It's like, full transparency from day one. This is how we do business on each side of the table. And then there's kind of a collaboration on how to get it started and how to manage it at an optimal level. 
I know you always say patience will pay off. Yes. hundred <laughs> percent. This is, oh, look, I am a patient person, but whew, there's moments, that's for sure. But again, that will come down to the relationship that you are going to have with your supplier, the owner, the merchandiser, the production, the QA, the logistics person. They mm. will do, fa- like, the squeaker wheel does get oil. You will, but it, it's got to be in a friendly way. They, they're they very, it's very much a personal relationship first and then the business. And finding that balance takes time yeah. and understanding the Australian market, understanding deadlines, our seasons are completely different to the rest of the world. So, you know, there's moments that we need things happening. And, um, you know, I always allow a bit of a buffer, of course, when I give it a handover date. And yeah. they, these are things. These are things you learn. Yeah, ab- absolutely. And I think you know brands and businesses having their critical path in place, mm. so knowing mm. what you need by when, and factoring in all of the variables. As you said, monsoon season now, but likewise, mm. you know, with China, there are also holidays, Chinese New Year, you have to plan for. So it's having all of those key times of the year on the critical path. So there's no surprises. It's not like, oh, I didn't anticipate that holiday and, you know, everyone was going to be away for three days. You're actually building it into your timeline and yes. you're, ahead, you're ahead of the game. So I think that's important as well. And it's part of the initial conversations when you're building up any kind of new, I guess, partnership. Correct. You've got to be ahead of the game. And we know in fashion, it moves so rapidly. Uh, yeah. So not only are you stay on top of your creativity, you're also staying on top of, you know, product to market strategy. So it everything has a knock on effect. Yeah. And uh, you learn all of this in a, in a life. Once you've gone around one calendar year, a seasonal mm. year, there's so much more takeaway that you from get go, if you know you're on the right path, you don't need to then be thinking about, oh, are, where have they gone? Why are they not answering? You know, am I still a priority? All of those things matter. Mm-hmm. Let's remind everyone how many years you've been sourcing from India. <laughs> a long time, 20 years. <laughs> and 20 I'm still going at it. And I, I'm still going. I'm still so engaged I mean now that I'm here I wasn't in COVID I just you know it's not my natural state as we were just (laughs) talking about being indoors so let alone not be able to walk around and have a good like just a couple of weeks ago we went sourcing for you know fabrics and new trims and embroideries and it's like a girl in a candy store I just saw so Mm -hmm. many new gems that you know gets me excited for 2025 and that's what drives this and in India is just a textile heaven, and I'm in just in the small, the small piece places that I go, and there's so much. So there's so much for everybody, and yeah. um, that's the lovely part. Mm. There's no shortage of inspiration, that's for sure. No, none. Mm. Let's talk about the unique value of the trip. So mm-hmm. maybe I'll start, shall I? Sure. Yeah. Let's let go for it, Liz. And I think, I think unless I had had a front row seat, I think it would be very hard to actually put into words the value of the trip. And I think that's something you and I are finding a little bit challenging. Just mm. when we share, we try and share this experience with everyone. We're like, ah, oh, those words just don't do that experience justice. But look, mm. from my perspective, you know, I've been working in fashion retail and wholesale for over 25 years now. And as we know, without credible supply chain partners who are the heartbeat of our businesses, we just don't have we don't have a business. So those meaningful relationships, they're absolutely everything and they're worth investing in, they're worth nurturing long term. And um, when you do that, there's a win-win for everybody involved, in my opinion, and what I've observed. Mm. So look, from my side, I'm in the consulting business. I've been in consulting for over 10 years now. So learnt a lot during the journey. And whilst Sourcing is not the only thing we help our clients with. It is an important pillar of the strategic work that we do. And I don't think there's a day that goes by where I don't get a DM or an email or a phone call saying, hey, can you help me find a manufacturer? I need 
a knitwear manufacturer. I need a resort wear manufacturer. I, what, and the list just goes on. And when you and I first met, Emma, I think it was one of the first conversations we had when you started telling me about the amazing trips you were doing around the globe. I'm like, my clients have got the problem. Emma's got the solution. We need to make this happen because India in particular can be challenging to get up and running. And we'll talk about that. But we know many people who have tried for years and years and years and invested a lot of money in trying to get their India supply chain up and running themselves. And unfortunately, just haven't been able to get it going for many different reasons. But with the trips that I've been on, we've seen, you know, the ladies come out the other end ready to either, or they've either already ordered their samples or, you know, they are um, just about, they're very close. And then within months, they're, you know, they're, they're working towards their production. So I don't think in my time I've ever seen a business, a, a relationship established and kick off so quickly. So I think mm. when we say the word launch pad or accelerator, I think that mm. definitely defines uh, what this trip is all about. So I think that the mm. value in that is you couldn't even put a number on it because, um, yeah, just think about it. The time, the money, the heartache that goes into trying to establish a sourcing arm of the business and this is kind of done for you. The ecosystem is already there. So I think anyone who's looking to grow their supply chain in India or to diversify and, you know, India has been on your radar for some time and you just haven't found a way to get it started. This is, as I said, done for you. So what about you, Anna? Mm. What are your yeah, thoughts? Yeah, we are definitely, you know, we've thrown a few words around on how to promote it, not over promote it, but the experience is so bespoke. And we, we, we're blending, you know, business, culture, adventure, uh, a beautiful group that have got a common interest. We're not tourists at all. Um, mm. we're, we're entrepreneurs, female, we're, you know, most of all the trips have been uh, female orientated, but we're open to men, of course. Mm. And it's just been, um, I mean, it's evolving. And you're right, it's a positive ecosystem from day one for all of the above and the the immersion into all of these different vibrant artists cultures textiles and you know then we've got the food and then the drinks and the uh, accommodation it's just an incredible experience so Mm -hmm. you just can't put the value on it if I had this 20 years ago I would have jumped on it I would have loved that And knowing that you've got people, like-minded people that are there, they're sort of your support network. And, you know, fashion can be kind of a competitive industry as well. So to feel safe to share ideas and get feedback from your peers is amazing. I just love the whole the whole support system as well. India is a gift that keeps on giving. I say that there's business opportunities here that you wouldn't even know about until you get here. So that's a big plus. And only your eyes will see that. So, you know, we're, there's lots of stories to share about business opportunities and we can, you know, that's something that we do when we're on the trip. Um, and then it's, hand, you know, we're hand-holding you along the way. The guidance is we are guiding you knowing because I've made a lot of mistakes. I, I've spent a lot of, lot of blood, sweat and tears parving this uh, way forward into India and India has changed so much even over the last two years that I have had a base here. So it's, it you, you know, it's flashing before my eyes how they are also doing business. So that's important to stay up to date with those valuable business connections. And um, then the networking, being with entrepreneurs, networking, knowing that you're all going in a, a positive direction. It's just a, it's just a great, it's just a great um, format. So mm. Yeah, I I think it's just a, a great opportunity and to grab it now. Uh, who knows what will happen in a year's time here as well. Things are always rapidly changing. Mm, I, I love it. It's so, it's so dynamic. And I love what you said about the collaboration side of things, you know, mm. just 
rewind a few years ago, even after a few years ago, you know, yeah. your supply chain partners were your trade secret. No one ever shared, you know, again, again, as you said, you've put so much into establishing relationships over the years, but we're very fortunate now. Here we are in 2024 and, you know, it is about working collaboratively. It is about transparency and sharing the good like you know when you've got something that's gold and for you Emma you've got these amazing supply chain partners that you're also supporting to grow their businesses and then we've got amazing Australian brands who need you know credible suppliers so it's it's that matchmaking um Mm. and business that's ready to be done pretty much immediately yeah very good that and that's true they they are they are appreciating that as well. The fact that we are bringing in people that are committed to doing business with them and looking at all the opportunities and looking at their business with fresh eyes. They, it's a closed loop. They are like, they really appreciate that. Yeah. The respect, the respect is great. Yeah, definitely a lot of respect there. And I think it's good to mention there's several of the manufacturers that have visited Australia and are working with other Australian brands as well. So they're not new to the Australian marketplace, which I think is important. So, you know, going into business with someone who already has an innate understanding of your marketplace can be powerful. Mm, Correct. That's a good point. They're not fresh startup factories they have been doing business they're they're family-run businesses they've been around for many many years and they do export globally and they have been to Australia and know you know how how to do business in Australia yeah yeah amazing so let's talk about the next trip so for those who are interested in joining our upcoming trip um what advice would you give to perhaps first-time participants and how do they prepare themselves to dive in? I think the the best advice is to come with a open mind and be prepared with your, there's, you know, we have a checklist of what what's your next collection look like, your mood boards, your spec sheets. So the, the administrate, you know, the business as usual stuff needs to be in a very, and we guide you through that. At that point, you have to just let go a little bit and mm. open up your mind, your eyes, your heart and let it come into you because there's a way that we think, oh, we know best. Of course we do. We know our brand best, but creativity is an evolution. So I, you know, for example, um, by being here, I see things, but then when I go abroad, I go, oh, that will work well with that. So, I'm, you know, you, you're always in your mind figuring it out. So day one, be open to that. You need to sort of bring down your own personal expectations on what you think you are as an artist and be open to explore lots of different options. So for me, that's the most important. I think one of the most common comments is, I never knew India was like this. I always thought India was X, Y, Z. It's just not. So what you think India is, it's probably not. Yeah, we know that for sure. <laughs> <laughs> that we can say. So yeah. leave all of that behind. Don't listen to anyone else's stories. Don't listen to anyone else's fears. I mean, I still laugh at the first trip post-COVID, my goodness. Um, so, you know, they, they just let all of that go it's it's not that the media doesn't sh- shine the light always on the best angle so that's my recommendations I'm not sure if I've missed anything there no but, I love uh, it I love it the open <laughs> mind I think you've been out it with open mind and open heart everyone and yeah. just dive in and, and embrace everything that India has to offer there's twists and turns and they're all exciting and it doesn't matter. I don't think what I experienced in India, I took away some gold. I was just like, mm. oh, wow. I think I was saying, oh, wow, oh, wow, oh, wow. Like, <laughs> that was my narrative the whole trip. <laughs> I was like everywhere I looked or everyone I met, oh, wow, oh, wow. It was just like it was it was the norm. Oh. So it's definitely an oh, wow moment. <laughs> Let's it put is. it that way. And it pretty, is. Yeah. Pretty enriching. I think I just think even, you know, fashion business aside, I just think it's such an enriching experience to have in life. Um, oh. Yes, you're growing professionally, but you're growing personally because you just, yeah, the senses are just constantly engaged and you're just taking in so, so much. 
Yeah. You're taking in so much and the stimulation is actually, you know, that that's, I mean, that's the, I used to do 10 day trips and, tw- you know, two week trips and, it beco- but it was intense. So yeah. you, be expecting that you you are yeah. going to take it all in and you, you sort of have to, because we're on a time limit, uh, but this will be the beginning of your journey and we can help with all of that, like planning for the next trip, but there's a lot to take in and, you know, there's horns, there's food, there's all sensory overload. Mm. But doing it in a group, I think there's no better way to experience Correct. it in a safe Correct. space, you know, with you Isn't as the it? guy Correct. who knows India like the back of your hand and, you know, you, you're in a safe space and you've got the you, your fellow, you know, crew to support you, whether you're feeling a little bit, you know, you might feel really inspired one day, the next day you might be, oh, what am I doing? I'm a little bit confused. Getting feedback from the group, support from the group, knowing that you're protected and safe and guided, that's very unique and just not readily available. So I think that makes it a great experience as well. It does. It does. Absolutely. Absolutely. So, yeah, it's very, very life-fulfilling, that's for sure. Yeah, totally. Now, Emma, we know that sustainability is at the forefront of fashion, so it would be good just to touch on, we've we've spoken a lot about the amazing sourcing partners that you'll be introducing everyone to, but let's just Mm. touch on the sustainable side of things. Um, What do you have to share about, you know, the manufacturers that you've curated, uh, how, how have you chosen them and what do they have to offer from the sustainability perspective? So I think the number one is that, you know, we have already pre-selected a network of manufacturers who have top quality products. Uh, They prioritise sustainability. They are open and then transparent. And when people are coming, they have their own uh, list. And I know there's uh, ones that are essential and then there's other needs that need to be met. So during the trip, you're going to be able to see all the facilities firsthand. You can get to see behind the scenes. You'll be able to have a chat with the owner of the factory. You'll be able to check all the production processes. You'll get a feel for all the essential parts of sustainability that are important to your brand. So, and then we have prioritised these connections. So for us, be able to sit down and have these face-to-face chats and ask those tough questions uh, about their ethical practices, their their sustainability practices. Uh, give it'll you'll get all the answers immediately. It will save you a lot of reading, a lot of online research. Mm-hmm. Um, it's a it is a big space. There's a lot to take on. And, you know, you come in with your top priorities and you ask those questions immediately. And, you know, like the previous trip, we sent those questions ahead of time so that the factories were also prepared to answer them on the first meeting. So it, it is a, it's it's number it's one of the top points when we do the introductions, yeah. and it's also one of the top points that we expect from every brand to be able to say what is what are their needs, and we tick them to say this has been met, and so forth. Yeah. So we do we've done a lot of that work prior, and I know you have so a lot of information about this as well, Liz, which you know you can um, really guide guide the participants on. Yeah. What's, yeah. what, what's, you know, what's essential and what's maybe not so essential. De- definitely, because I'll be working with the group in the lead up to the trip so that everyone yeah. is well prepared to hit the ground running when they arrive and meet you in India. So one of the things that we'll be working on is making sure everyone's equipped with their sustainability policy or their code of conduct as well. So as you've rightly said, there's a lot of variances when it comes to sustainable sourcing. So for accreditation, for example, some of the manufacturers have CEDEX certification, GOTS, GRE, which is for recycling, BIS, which is a quality management certification, but different businesses want different things. So we always go through the checklist. What does your sustainability policy look like for your business? If the person coming on the trip is at the startup stage, then I'll guide them through that. But it's essentially building that plan. So all the questions can be asked in person on the ground in India, knowing that you've already done the vetting and you've got long-term relationships. And as you said, questions can be sent in advance. But 
there's nothing like visiting the actual mm. manufacturer, seeing it for your own eyes. I think that's where true, you know, transparent sourcing comes in when you've met the principal, yep. you've met everyone involved in the supply chain and you're able to have that sense of comfort that your requirements are being met. So very Correct. important. And I think a, a huge um a, a huge area that, again, you can walk away from that experience with a sense of comfort that you've done your due diligence in that area Correct. because Correct. You, you can be exposed as a business when you haven't actually cited where your products are made um, and where they're coming from. So very, very important. Very true. Very important. So let's talk about um, the next trip, the dynamics of it. So it's taking place on from the 28th of September to the 6th of October. Can you just share a little bit around the experience, the itinerary and who this specific trip is for? Thanks, Liz. Um, super excited about this one now that we've had a couple and we've again uh, re sort of skinned it, so to speak, <laughs> and pulling pulling in more and we've we've flipped it around. So we're gonna be arriving uh into the whirlwind of Mumbai and uh, this is where fashion and culture and adventure are all in one spot and where I'm based. It's like a, a village on steroids. And so you'll be thrown into that and it's a lot of fun. And then I'll be your host. And we're also going to be including like a home cooked meal at my place. And you'll get to have that sense of food as well. And we'll be going to the markets. Uh, after that, we'll be going into uh, Jaipur, the pink city. And Rajasthan in itself is the capital of textiles. And we'll, there you'll be exposed to incredible fabrications, incredible handmade fabrics. Um, it's just, a, and that is a booming city in itself that is growing rapidly. And uh, so many, so many different angles that you can look at it versus uh, original vintage fabric, handmade fabrications, lightweight cottons, subtropical climate all blending together it's a buzzing gorgeous city and we'll be spending time there in a relaxed environment where you can actually start pulling your ideas and putting them down on uh, paper and sharing them so we have a beautiful workspace there with sort of uh, you know lots of area for you to map it all out there's nothing better than being able to sort of put it all on a table and then start you know putting some ideas down and producing uh sampling plans and after that we'll be going our final destination is Delhi and Delhi is um, a massive city and uh, we go into a gorgeous little hub and stay there for a couple of nights and through Delhi we'll, you can either go straight into doing business and meet the suppliers that you want to do some sampling with and production with and we can do that fast track you through there or if you are on an exploration trip and you are starting out and you just need to see more and gather more, we can do, we will be doing markets, we'll be doing Khan market, we'll be looking at Indian designers, so going into little boutiques. And then there's the beautiful food and cultural experience after that. So this is this trip is tailor-made uh, for fresh inspiration, whether you're a startup and you're gathering ideas or you're ready to expand your horizons. You, your brand needs some life, some energy, some new colour, some new fabric, and you need you need a lift. Um, this is the place to go. So, you know, if you're passionate about all of those and you're hungry for adventure, this is the trip. This is what this is what we're recommending. And you're with a nice, friendly bunch of people. <laughs> what what more could you ask for? <laughs> Mm, absolutely and I just think what you've just shared the curation of this trip is absolutely I think you've nailed it because there's something in it for everybody for anyone who's heard us talk about the previous trips the last trip that we did was more for established brands but as Emma said this is going to be for those who are perhaps at the startup stage or even in the first few years of business or perhaps you've just you've been in business for a while but India just hasn't um you haven't had the opportunity to source out of India to date. So it's a real introduction to India 
and nothing to be intimidated by, shall we say. Mm, correct. That's right. The pressure is off. This is a uh... This is really an immersion into a creative process and you can put more pressure on, we can adjust it and we can uh, fit into the needs of and at how fast pace you want to go with yeah. your own work. Mm-hmm. So, and, and the soft launch into the sort of melting pot of Mumbai is just going to be enough to sort of fire off all these little sparks of, oh, wow, I can't wait to do, can't wait to do that. And we know uh, that we're, we're, we're taking you down a path that will end in Delhi. And if you want to do the business end there, that is where you go. If you're not ready and you're just collecting ideas, we go down another path. So it, it can be definitely tailored at that final mm-hmm. couple of days in Delhi. Yeah, perfect. And it's important to share with everyone that we do, you know, we we meet you obviously and we have a really in-depth conversation before you're invited to join the trip. There's a questionnaire so we get to learn as much as we can about you, your business if you're already trading, your sourcing goals or your business goals. And as Emma said, you know, the trip is fine-tuned to make sure every single person that comes on the trip achieves your ideal outcome. So I think that's pretty unique as well, that we're really yeah. calibrating to the needs of everyone who's on the trip. So we are hosting an information session. So for anyone who's tuning in and you want to know more, we've shared a lot, but if you want to know more and you want (laughs) to see the detailed itinerary and, of course, uh, more about the experience, the investment of the trip, the powerful outcomes and the ROI that you can expect, and then we'll share all of that with you in a presentation format, a visual presentation format, and then we'll open it up to a Q&A. So you can come along with your questions. It'll be Emma and I there, and you'll be able to fast track uh, gaining an insight into everything you need to know to make a decision. We are very conscious about curating a dynamic and in synergy, I guess, group. So not everyone who applies will be accepted because there's only limited spaces and we want to make sure that firstly we can deliver on everything that you need but that the group works together really synergistically. So you'll be invited to join us once we go through uh, the sharing of more information but I'm going to pop the link to the information session in the show notes so you'll be able to just jump on, register for that. It's via Zoom on Monday the 17th of June at 6.30 p.m. Melbourne time. So we will record that, but it's best to come along live because you'll be able to answer your questions because the week after that will basically be working towards closing the trip off and yep. um, onboarding everyone because we're going to have to move pretty quickly. Times, you know, we're halfway through the year just about already. That's right. It'll come around very fast. And there are, yes, of course, there's some uh, bookings that need to be done quite quickly. But after that, then it, it, we take care of everything else. Yeah, definitely. And it's important to know, I know we'll cover it in the info session, but Emma, you'll be recommending the accommodation as well. There's different levels of accommodation for everyone. There's um, and just stunning boutique accommodation, which is a unique experience in itself before you even pass, <laughs> you even pass go. It's it's absolutely amazing, something that you've probably never experienced anywhere else in the world. But you'll be guided right. through all of that, everyone. So all of the trip dynamics you'll be guided through. Um, That's right. We're at the pointy end, Emma. Anything in closing that you'd like to share? Look, uh, for me, I feel that this trip is just perfect for anyone that is just looking for a change. They're looking for, for some excitement. Not It's not a touristy trip. We're not taking you to the Taj, even though I recommend it. You can tag <laughs> that on to the end. <laughs> it's about full immersion into creativity that is has no boundaries. Uh, mm-hmm. It's only the boundaries that you put on yourself. So this is about just letting it all go and come here. It's And you'll see where tradition meets innovation. It's right. It's on every corner. The inspiration of old handmade techniques that are still happening to the, in today's modern day technology, uh, seeing colours made by hand with powder, nothing with the laptop around. All of that is so exciting and so inspiring. 
So it will, you'll just feel joy and you don't know where that's going to take you. So I just think this is a great opportunity to, for anyone that's looking for uh, a creative injection. This is, this is the way to go. Mm, I love that. You'll just feel joy. Mm, I, lo- you I just love feel that. Joy. Yeah, which is, <laughs> which is just a great way to, to articulate it. I don't think I can beat that, but from my, <laughs> from where I've sat on these trips, it's, it's definitely about feeling supported. It's, you know, traveling with like-minded creatives and entrepreneurs, you know, we just don't get mm. to do that with, you know, we're no. all working in the business. It's rare that we get out and about to work on the business. So I think that's just unbelievable, that dynamic. And of course, having a trusted industry guide such as yourself, Emma, again, I mean, just not readily available anywhere else. I think mm. it's definitely about, you know, being on the ground, like getting amongst it, having those meaningful conversations, meeting amazing, talented suppliers who understand the Australian marketplace and want to help you grow your business. I think, mm. you know, that's just gold. They, they're they there to help you grow your business. But I think we can say confidently, it's not just about growing professionally, it's certainly about growing personally I think that's an absolute Mm. given so we can't wait to welcome you we're super excited that we're able to offer this unique sourcing experience trip so invited you're invited to join us at the info session as I said I'll put the information in the show notes and we can't wait to connect with you soon correct can't wait to connect and walk the streets of India thanks Emma thanks for unpacking India with me thanks Liz always Thank you so much for listening to the Fashion Business Mindset Podcast. We'd love to keep connected. You can find us on Instagram and Facebook at Fashion Equipped. Head to our website, fashionequipped.com.au. If you've enjoyed this episode, please share this podcast with others. Hit subscribe, leave us a rating and review. Let's do this together. Let's make the fashion business your business. This is a Guide Your Light Network production, creating podcasts with purpose.